can I can we light this? Yeah, light it up. Oh shit, I'm about to light up this little fucking revolver right here. Pew 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 pew. We about to take it. We about to uh, get lit up right now. This is the OG Podcast. Shout out to all y'all for tuning in right now. You could be anywhere in the world doing whatever you want, and you're going to join me for this awesome session with some amazing friends and, and some of the world's best rollers, in my opinion, but I think a lot of people will agree. Uh, shout out to wherever you're at. If you're watching on YouTube or you're on iTunes or on Dash Radio, we're at Purple Haze. Wherever you're listening, in the grow room, at work, in your car, wherever the fuck you're at, we appreciate it. Uh, it's going to be an amazing day. I'm going to learn a lot because there's so many more questions I want to ask you guys. And I know y'all haven't uh, been on a podcast before. This is the first interview first with time. you guys. I got Roll BMC in the building. Hello, hello. I got Weavers in the building. Hello. But before I get to them, and you know you know Weavers, he's rolled all sorts of crazy blunts. I've smoked my face. I've smoked big old weapons. I, every time I look at my memories, there's always a crazy ass blunt I smoked. Uh, uh, any weapon you could think of. Of guns, knives, swords, any object, bats, fucking... I, I can't even think of all the things you've rolled, but so many things. You got a couple things in front of us. If you're watching on YouTube, you could see it. If not, we'll talk about it a little bit. And of course, Mr. Uh, Roll BMC, who makes probably the best yeah. pre rolls in the game. Uh, they're called Loaded. I don't know if you've seen it, but they got some special rolls. It's a patent pending little tip. And he's out here rolling all sorts of things. But before we get into them and talk about this, I want to talk about something real quick because, you know, the, the, the culture and the industry is really expanding and people are coming in and making money. Money and shout out to everyone who's opening new brands and companies. But there's uh, two major things that people are going after in this industry. You guys can agree or disagree with me, but uh, one of them is cartridges. Everyone and their mom has a cartridge or a vape cart, and they out here like making money and pre rolls. There's a lot of pre rolls out here. Agreed. And uh, if you go to dispensaries or any shop or wherever you are, if you're in a legal state or an illegal state, I'm sure you're asking for carts or pre-rolls. But uh, I just want to talk about uh, the pre-rolls real quick. I've touched base on the carts a little while ago, but I will touch base on the pre-rolls because there's so many types out there. There's all many different price ranges. I just want to let you, the consumer, know uh, what to look for, what to get, because sometimes we go in here blindly and don't know, and sometimes there's great packaging or the price is weird, you don't know it, and some of it could be trim. Uh, trim is basically just what you cut off the weed that uh, is not part of the flower, and people roll that up. Uh, some people roll outdoors, greenhouse, indoors. Some people have uh, concentrates involved if it's hash or dipped in oil, covered in keef. So just know what you're smoking and know where it's coming from because, you know, there's a lot of people that just have faces on products and uh, they're just out there and not really caring about the consumer. But know what it is, especially now with the legal market, you know what's testing because from my experience, uh, being a bud tender for many, many years and, and being in this industry for more than half my life, like I know what people have put in pre-rolls. I know what the, I've seen people put blasted material in pre rolls, like oh, they'll blast their nasty. weed and then re roll it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just, just, you know. Killer. Yeah, yeah. We, people have smoked PM in their life and mold and oh. bud raw and, and pesticides and not known it, but now with legalization and everyone educating themselves, we know more about the flower and it's great, but it's also fucking a lot of people's game up. So I just want to say the pre roll market is crazy. A couple of people on this panel have some pre rolls right now. Just know if you're a real smoker endorsing the product that it's probably a good joint. That's what I would say. All right? 
Because I know you're out there like, yo, let me just get a $5 joint. Or you got to buy one, get one. And people just trying to get the bottom of the barrel. Just know what the fuck you smoking. Right? Y'all right. with me? Is that all right? Am I on my own? If you're listening, let me know. If you're on the comment section, write it down. Let me know about your pre-roll experiences. Uh, speaking of pre-roll experiences, I actually... Uh, you know, when I took time off doing the podcast, I was doing a lot of TV things. I was doing a lot of uh, videos, and I had a segment with uh, Mr. BMC, Blunt Master Chu. That's yeah, we what we did. It, if you don't know what uh, BMC stands for, because I've asked a couple times, Blunt Master Chu. Yeah, yeah, it's a funny nickname. Uh, a couple of homies gave me back home in Chicago. What? So you're from Chicago? Yeah, I'm from Chicago. And were you like the one that rolled in your group? Like you're like, I got this shit. Anytime someone got weed, they're like, here, roll it, BMC. Uh, it was, it became like that, but it was like, I was always the one with weed. Like I found this like little party group that I went to the clubs with and stuff. And, you know, we would, I would always be the one with weed, just running like extendos. When, uh, did, you, when did you start smoking? Maybe like 2007. And was it like a joint your first, or like oh, a, no, a Duchess, a, a Dutch master? Three blunts on a road trip to a breakdancing competition what? in St. Louis. Hey, fun fact. See, I know I know uh, our panels. I'm really good friends with both of these guys, and they're awesome people. But I, I'm, I'm going to shoot out some fun facts. If you didn't know about uh, Mr. BMC, Dan, he used to be in a dance crew where he was a break dancer, and he used to travel the country part I of did. a dance. I did. He might have been on uh, America's Best Dance Crew. He might have <laughs> uh, been at your favorite high school performing or at your favorite dance club killing it you want you like an award winning dance crew right uh, so <laughs> he's humble <laughs> he's humble so i did it for about 10 years you know just winning like local competitions uh <clears throat> local as in like us but um one of our crew members moved out to la joined quest crew from america's best yeah. dance crew oh, okay. and then won with them and they also won an Emmy for Best Choreographed Dance Group. Hey, for TV. So, you know, that's kind of a... So your boy's like, I'm out here killing yeah, it. Yeah, so he came out here and I was like, shit, man, he did it. Like, and, uh, you know, just like the, the weed social media thing started to pick up for me. And it's I was like, man, maybe I can kind of do it too. So I moved out here last year. Been coming for out dancing? Here. No, no, for, for, for weed. Just for weed? Yeah, yeah. My homie did it for dancing, though. Okay. He drove his little shitty-ass car out here. And he made it. And he made it. The Hollywood dream. And you're like, dream. I like weed. I'm in Chicago. Weed sucks. LA's where it's at. My boy did it with dance. Let me see if I can do something with weed. Yep. And what'd you do? I just started uh, reaching out to people, seeing if they wanted to collab. And uh, one thing led to another. I, uh, some people responded back, like Bear Woods. Yeah, uh, you know, shout out Bear Woods for for giving me my first uh, intro into the industry. Hey, we were there. In the, you know, we were in the beginning. Yeah, we were out there. Um, and actually, the decision to actually come out here to work in the first place, I I got off of a fortune cookie. I was like at dinner one day, and the fortune cookie said, "Take on risks with your reputation." What? And it just fit really well in my life at that point. Are you a, are you a, a Chinese descent? Are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm Chinese. Did, so our fortune cookies like really was this like a real Chinese restaurant or is this yeah, like one like, of those like no, Americanized? Like, it was one of my it's one of my favorite Chinese restaurants in like, Chicago. In Chicago, and it's like real fortunes, and you're like, yo, we taking this serious. I mean, I never really took the fortune serious, but because you're like, this a lot one of that, hits home. Yeah, this one, this one really hit it it's home. It's like for reading me. a meme. Yeah, and I was just like, oh, I you can keep it in my wallet still. What? Yeah. So you took a risk, came yeah. out here. People knew you for your blunts because I started following you and then you came and then we linked up yeah, and we worked you. together in the beginning and then we were talking about our goals and dreams together and one thing led to another and uh, you started a company called Loaded. Loaded Co. Which is one of my favorite pre-rolls. Thank you, thank you. I carry them in my bag all day. I agree. Um, unfortunately, you know, the market changes so we can't do blunts as often anymore. Unfortunately, yes. But uh, we got the joints. But I go in full circle now. The reason why I went to you first is because I did a show about pre-rolls when I was on uh, uh, Brass Knuckles Network doing the Getting Highway show. And I had you come on. Thank you, Sideshow. Shout I, out Sideshow uh, and Quam. I had you come on because I did a little segment called Can You Tell the Difference? And knowing you're a roller, I went to a dispensary and I got four different joints. I got the free joint that they give out. I got the $5 joint. I got the $20 joint. And I got the $40 joint. And we had a whole segment. We had some and variety. We didn't know which one was which. And we had to smoke them and examine them. And we did like a hands-on. And we got to see some of the fucked up shit that people put in joints. Yeah, there's some pretty gnarly stuff from what I remember. Yeah. Uh, just smoking it was pretty harsh. And then we, we gutted all of them. And the, the guts have just... Some were like, looked like dart. Yeah. Some had some foreign objects in it. Some were Major just- Major stem. Soaked in crazy ass 
uh, uh, materials that you couldn't even smoke it. Like it was yeah. super saturated and like they're what, uh, like a hash oil or distillate or whatever the fuck covered in keef, re-dipped. And you're like, yo, I can't even hold this joint. Yeah. If I learned anything from that little experiment is that just because it's cheap doesn't mean it's good. What? And just because it's cheap doesn't mean you should smoke it. Yeah. Just because it's expensive doesn't mean it's the fire. Because we got some pricey ones that were really hard to hit. And you're a real smoker and you got into it and you started rolling. And, and I mean, a lot of people love your tech. You got that crazy filter tape. If you don't, if you're not familiar, you do a little like a. Yeah, it's like a little, it's like a little like tuck uh, with the, the tobacco into the filter. Um, and I mean, it's really quite, it's more simple than people think. Um, How'd you think of that? Where you just like, because I've seen you roll and you you write to you like, oh, here's a torpedo, here's a fucking, uh, I, I mean, what kind, like, how many blood cigar types are there? Uh, there's a lot, man. Pretty much anything you can think of, you can give a name to. But like a lot of the general ones are like, uh, it's torpedoes, robustos are real popular in America, which are like uh, 50 gauge and uh, it's measured off of uh, 60 fourths of an inch. What? So 50 is like almost an inch, probably like three quarters. Uh, of an inch. And what are you smoking right there? Uh, this was a Lancero. This was like a 32 A Lancero. It's like fucking wheat strains. I got fucking the torpedo, the Lancero. Uh, the- fun what- fact, the Lancero is actually uh, Fidel Castro's favorite and Cohiba made it, designed it for him. What? Uh, he got a custom roll? He got a custom from Cohiba. What? Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, but yeah, there's a bunch of different varieties of uh, styles and shapes and just whatever your imagination can think What's of. What's this one called? That one would just be considered a regular cigarillo. Well, that's a sideshow special. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I had him to make it happen. So sideshow rolls some nice blunts. It's just crazy because uh, being in the cannabis industry, there's so much, so much opportunity for anyone. If you have a passion for something, you could actually make something. And here you are with your homies in Chicago. Where everyone started making you roll the blunts, and you're like, "Fuck it, I'm reading my fortune cookie. I'm making my way." Yeah. Yep. And we out here now smoking. Now, who have you smoked with? That uh, you've never thought you'd be smoking like you here you are. When did you start smoking? How old were you? Uh, I was uh, like nineteen, twenty. Uh, here you are, nineteen year old. Starts you like, damn, it'd be dope to smoke with. And then here you are, a couple years later, smoking with. Man, you know what? When I first started smoking weed, I never even had the like thought of like even like smoking on like that caliber of a level, you know, that high of a caliber with like people like that. Because you know, growing up in Chicago, it's like we had to hide smoking weed, so like I never really uh, thought about like. Who, who I, I get you know, high with. Like, you know, it's like the typical people like Bob Marley, at, you know, at yeah. some rappers and shit like Biggie Tupac. Who has smoked one of your blunts that you've seen them and you're like, damn, I can't believe one of my blunts made it in his hand. Uh, the first celebrity, I think I can, I say smoked one of my just regular, regular blunts was uh, Exhibit. Whoa. Uh, like maybe like a year and a half, two years ago. And he smokes a lot of blunts. Yeah, he smoked a lot of blunts. Did uh, he like, he was like, who rolled this? You know. Who rolled this? <laughs> I just kind of like uh, kept kept back at that time because it was like for this weed maps party. Uh, you were there too. What? It was, it was like that uh, that brass knuckles weed maps oasis party. Oh, Coachella. Coachella, weekend. yeah, Coachella. Damn, weekend. And, that was a uh, while ago. That was like my first time getting like hired for like blunt uh, rolling, blunt rolling for personal rolling. For, <laughs> they hired, hey, we need a personal blunt roll of the weekend. For, uh, you available? It was like David. You know David. Yeah, Everyone yeah, here of knows course. David. You know, High yeah. times influencer. Yeah, back to back yeah. out here. And he was just like, hey. Uh, I want to hire you to roll blunts for me and my friend, Alvin. So I didn't even know his exhibit mm-hmm. at first. You know, he just kept referring to him as Alvin. I was like, okay, cool. Like, I had never done anything like that before. Um, it was a little bit nerve wracking. That, that's so LA. Like, I got <laughs> hired to go to a music festival with a rapper to roll their weed. Like, look at you, Chicago, LA. And I was just told to uh, make sure <laughs> that he always had a blunt in his hand. Yes. So I was like, a, okay, I can do that. You know, I'll he, try my best. I'll just roll all 50 blunts ready and just have them and then see how he and smokes. Uh, actually, the 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 ride up to Coachella with David was like pretty crazy. It was a really crazy experience for me because uh, I didn't know, but it was like, he put me like his little like job interview. On the way up there. So so from L.A. to Coachella, for anyone that's not familiar, um, it's about like a two-ish hour drive, depending on traffic. So here you are with someone that just hired you. You're yeah, in the car. Yeah, I just met him like so it's like, a couple of weeks ago. So you're getting questioned now. Yeah, and you know. Where yeah. are you from? What are you doing? He was just like, not even really that. He was just like, we had pre-rolled blunts, but he was just like, hey, roll me a blunt. And was, we're riding in a, a, a the Phantom with the, the top down. Wait, wait, wait. 
You're driving. I'm sure you're on the freeway, so you're going yeah. like more Interstate than 60 highway. miles an Interstate hour. Interstate highway, super fast. He was going 90. In a Phantom with the top down, so you're so it's convertible. Yeah. And he's like, roll me a blunt. And without thinking, I just what said yes. What the fuck? And, uh, you know, I just did, yeah, and I started, like, breaking down the backwood, and then, like, as soon as I opened it, all the tobacco started flying everywhere. Oh, shit. So I, I was like, oh, fuck, like, really? At least I got how am I going to do this? Like, weed. Everything's going to fly everywhere. And, uh, you know, it's, like, tobacco flying everywhere. I get it gutted. I crumple it up in my hand, use my other hand to break up the weed. You crumpled up the, toba- the backwood leaf. Yeah, and I just kind of, like, put it right. under my thigh. And then I used uh, my other hand to break up the weed, and... You know, that shit was flying everywhere, too. And uh, I had pretty much had to, like... Hunch? Hunch way, way over into the seat. Like, under the dashboard. Under the seat. Oh, were you in the front seat or the back? Uh, the back. Oh, so you're getting most of the wind, because yeah. all that shit's coming in. Most all the wind. And I said, pretty much had to roll the blunt under my two, both my legs. Was he laughing while you're doing this, or was he just like, this motherfucker's really about to try to roll a blunt? He was just cruising, man. He was flooring it. Just Okay. And, you know, I, I finally get it rolled up. You know, but like halfway through, like I'm like, fuck, man, maybe I should ask him to like put the top up or like I should yeah. start over or something. But I'm like, you know what, fuck it. Like I took this it as a, a challenge. challenge. Exactly. Let's go. So I was like, I'm going to try to get something rolled up because something's better than nothing. And uh, I'm really glad I did that. Um, but I get it rolled up. And then uh, the next task was to get it sparked up. And I had given my torch to the other car. Oh, fuck. All I had was a clipper. Thankfully, it was a clipper. Clippers are clippers coming. Yeah. They come. Um, they're yeah. a lot easier than Bix. I hate to say it, guys, but uh, Clippers 1, are a little easier percent. than Bix. Uh, uh, I, you know, I don't, I'm not trying to get no sponsorships or anything. I'm just saying, in real life. Jaime, you can try. I see Jaime laughing over here. Yeah, we but, um, good. <laughs> you know, it's like the wind is like killing the, the lighter. So I had to hunch over, find a little nook in the car, get it lit. And as soon as I get it lit and smoking, David goes, his nose turns up to the air. And he goes, you got it? Like, like hit, shocked. Like, like shocked, you know? And I was like, yeah, you know, it was like, maybe like half a blunt right. or something. But, you, you, know, did, you did what it. you could. Yeah. And then like the next day, uh, the next morning, it was just him and I like in the morning smoking a blunt. He was like, yeah, you know what? Like, uh, I told him, I was like, man, I wanted to put the top up and ask you to stop no, or whatever. Can't. And he's like, you know, I'm, I was so surprised that you got it done because I was like my interview <laughs> to you to see how like good you could be. And as soon as you got that blunt rolled up and sparked, I was like. He's good. May it He's happen. Good. What? And Fucking passed it. From then, it was like, you know, just, it like, it just grew. increased my blunt rolling like tenfold, hundredfold just because. You got that confidence. You know, he smokes a lot of blunts. He did. And he gives a lot of blunts away. So he just does. like, I had to keep up like. And, Get that yeah. machine. You're like a rolling machine. Don't, are your hands insured? No. I actually well, got bit by a dog uh, oh, like a month fuck. ago. It's kind well, of s- s- sketchy a little bit. Let me know. You know, I got insurance. I got the green shield and shit, so I could hook you up with a plan or something, make you get insure your hands. You You're know like J-Lo. Green shield. <laughs> green. Uh, so that's crazy. And at that event, that was like, you know, the first time we were really, you know, we hung out. We vibed yeah. out because I was there too, doing a little thing with uh, Brass Knuckles and Wee Maps. Um, you were there too, Javi. Yeah, we got there. to roll. Yeah. <laughs> Race Ram smoked your blunt. They yeah. stole it. Yeah, we smoked oh, yeah. Uh, one of Weavers. Uh, and made if you don't ship. know. Dude, he made the, the sickest a dope blunt. Ass shit. Dude, it was a pirate ship with cannons and each cannon pulled out as a blunt. Yes. <laughs> And uh, you also had another one there. You had a two smaller pieces. ship. Yeah, you had a, a small ship and a big ship. And uh, I, I've known Hot Weavers for a couple of years now. I've smoked a lot of your blunts. I had a lot of them at uh, the secret sessions. We started smoking a lot of those there. Uh, a lot of the events, a lot of the cups, and uh, got to be at Coachella and smoke those ships. I got some epic pictures with those. But uh, how did how did I want to hear the beginning of you, Weavers? I want to hear how you started because you. Dan, BMC over here makes, you know, practical blunts, shit that you can roll Normal, up. Regular oh, blunts. great blunts. But when it comes to you, I mean, your blunts are your, your blunts are glorious, but they're Amazing. more they're more artistic and functional blunts. They're more uh, uh, shit that not everybody can roll. And it's not really rolling. It's more like... Uh, arts and crafts. Arts and crafts. It, it's like way more than that. Before he even starts talking, I just want to say, like, nobody's done more... <laughs> Than this guy has as, as far as like Rolling as a whole Like this guy's done Like For Way a- Way way more shit Than like a lot of people Have done Including myself And he deserves way more credit Than he gets And, and I've Thank seen Thank you I appreciate that and, and I've seen a lot of Celebrities With their blunts in your hand And I've 
I personally have experience of someone Same. Uh, sending an Uber to you yeah. to just pick up blunts to drive to them wherever they're at for their show that they got to do. Like, yo, I'm just going to send an Uber, put the blunts in there. It's going to come back to me. I don't care that I'm 90 miles away. We're making it happen. <laughs> Insanely humble, too. The yes. most humble guy. So how did, how did you start doing? Uh, well, blunt? I've always loved art, arts and crafts my whole life. You know, like as a kid, um, well, in, as a in like kid. school, you're like, arts yeah, and crafts, my favorite. Oh, I love it. Okay. I've always excelled in everything, wood, anything. Um, but definitely I, I just, when I was younger, I realized art, you have to put a lot of effort into art. You know, you have to have a good story, have a story built up with your art. You can't just start making something and expect it to sell it for a lot of money. I had an opportunity to work at Boeing. So I actually, what? Took, that's I, smart shit. <laughs> Damn. So I actually worked at Boeing for about six years and I took that direction. I never thought I'd do art again. I have a daughter and sometimes she, money. she asked me to make uh, costumes. I've never made a costume before, so I just tried it and like sewing, cut and sew shit. Sewing, um, steaming, what? that's Look crazy. Out of the year, right anything. here. Anything. So I would make her costume. So you took challenge. You like yeah, challenges. I love challenges. Okay. So I mean, I've always loved art, and um, after I stopped working for Boeing, I, I started working for Ericsson for a while um, in telecommunications. Right. I stopped working for a while, and then I was in a sad place for a while, and. The weed industry kind of just... Uh, Were you always smoking weed? Oh, always smoking When did weed. you start? Like, how old? I actually stopped when I was working at Boeing. Okay. The, they took they hair test. tests. Yeah, yeah, hair tests. It was pretty intense. Hair tests? Oh, yeah. Fuck. Plus, I wanted to work at the at Boeing, you know. It was actually a nice job. Where did job. they get hair from? No, I'm just playing. Oh. I'm just, I love high I used to have part. long hair. Now, I don't have okay. hair, but I actually used to have long hair. <laughs> I, that's going to be me. You'll yeah. be me in a couple of years. I they get lifted it. up my hair and cut out like an inch strip. Fuck. They were laughing after they cut my hair. And I was looking at them like, are you Why laughing Why were they laughing? Because they knew you were on drugs? They cut so much. Uh, oh, yeah, man. the airline's no joke. My girl's dad man. works for uh, United, and I'm always trying to get him to blaze and they, shit, you know? But they, he's like, one, he's too afraid of the potency, and two, they random test. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. So, uh, so what? You were like middle school, high school. Yeah, and then um, where are you from? Me, I've grown up in the valley. What? Eight one eight. Eight one eight. My whole life. What? That's I why might leave, but I always always end up coming hey, back here. You know, anyone who was born and raised in the valley, like cannabis was. I mean, it's it's oh, here. It's, I'm reborn cannabis in the valley. Really good too. <laughs> A reborn valley. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Cannabis has always been good in the valley. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize. Yeah. That. It's we started a yeah. lot of a lot of trends out here. But okay, so you've so, been smoking most of your life. So then, uh, one of my friends. So after after that, I was just um, I wasn't doing anything for a little while, and uh, one of my friends called me up because he was extracting, and he knew I would understand. So I went over there, and then we made friends, <laughs> and um, you knew the science and math. knew the science and everything. So we made friends, and we liked drinking and going out and having fun. And one day we were just, he showed me a woven blunt online. And I was just like, okay, two pieces of paper woven together. Right. Not a big deal. Right. You know, I could teach a child to do that. But a woven, like, mm -hmm. I remember a bunch of years ago, like, when people were weaving their blunts and putting, yeah. like, gold papers in there and, like, writing things out. People, that was, like, the, that, that was, like, the, they were like, dude. Yeah. This is crazy. So, Tony Greenham was doing that shit. Oh, yeah, he did that. Yeah, first, shout definitely. out to Tony Greenham. So definitely. Tony. Yeah. That's where he showed me that. So he bought the materials and threw it on the table. Is I like, made one. It. Yeah, I looked at it, but I changed it up a little bit. So I you, made you it took a little the challenge, bigger. like Dan. Oh yeah, let's, let's be make it challenge. happen. I'm ready for a challenge. The Always. thing I wanted to do was add a glass tip to it because I noticed it wasn't glass tips. Ooh. And then the way it was woven, there was always a big piece of tobacco left over, and I always thought they should go right to the end. So All I kind of cleaned it up, and then I started putting good weed, about two grams of good weed, and then putting some Nature's Lab live resin. What? Some hash. Some hash just crumbling Taking it, it to the next there. level. I remember when Man. I was like, just got an Instagram, started getting in the weed, the weed game, doing the rolling thing, and uh, I seen you come out with uh, the microweave. Oh, the like, microweave. That took dude. me so long. The microweave. Because <laughs> I've tried the weaving, you know, and it's it's it, definitely it's tedious. It's tedious. Yeah. So and then the tobacco to the dries up. It yeah. Dries up quickly. Yeah. It does. You gotta keep yeah. that shit moist. Yeah. And then I also was making for the secret session. Remember, I made a three ounce woven blunt. Yeah, you did a on big one. Sundays we sesh. You did a beaker. You've done uh, so many. Th I can't even like well, remember. Well, that's where the name Weavers came from because you were weaving, weaving the blunts, blunt. right? And then I was thinking to myself, why can't I do everything I know about arts and crafts and just use different materials? You know, rolling paper is paper, right? Tobacco, construction paper with a time limit, right? You know? So All the little, materials are similar. Are, it's a little yeah, bit more delicate. Use, yeah, I'm using X-Acto knife as my main tool. <laughs> okay. For you the know. record, I think Weavers is a badass nickname. 
Because right you. here on the table, right in front of us, uh, you brought, if you're watching this, you could see it. If you're not watching, uh, he got a peak and in the peak, he has an attachment, but it's a blunt attachment <laughs> that's functional. With the, like I could dab out of the blunt. Well, I mean, the- <laughs> I've seen so many new nice glass attachments. I was like, why can't I make a blunt attachment? Yeah. So you put a, it's all gold and it goes right into the peak. It's an attachment. You'll be taking dry hits because you're not putting no. water in there. No. But it's a. Uh, Fits the peak. He has a, a revolver. It's a little tiny revolver. A little revolver. I, it looks like something I want to smoke right now. Get Light higher shit. What? And then you have a, a bat. Yeah, a in little a case bat. Right in front of us. Looks like a little slugger. Oops. Looks like it'll get people knocked out. Sturdy. What? It's a kind of safe logo on there. So you just started, uh, you started with the woven blunt and then you just started incorporating your talents with arts and crafts. Yes. And said people started hitting you up, started giving you designs, giving you logos. You started taking us challenges and uh, you've been like, I've seen your blunts all around the world well, now. Really? All around the world? Yeah. I've seen them in Europe. I've seen them across the States. Wow. I've seen them. Uh, worldwide, man. I've seen them. Wow. Well, you remember the first blunt that actually made that wasn't a woven blunt was the beaker. The beaker. You know. And I hit it. We didn't know what to expect. Don't know what, but you got to. Re- okay, look. So let me explain something real quick to you guys with about these uh, artistic blunts. When we smoke weed and you roll a joint or a blunt, like how big is the cherry? You know, it's, it's never bigger than a dime. Yes. It's never, depending how fat it is, yeah. like you're probably not rolling it. No more than an inch, no. I would say, for like regular. Yeah. That's like, what things. is that, like a dime? That's like a. A little bigger like than a, a dime? Dollar. Like a nickel? Like a half dollar? But yeah. people ain't rolling yeah, that. That's like, like the, I'm just talking about regular. Yeah, yeah. Regular, I'm talking like, about like regular. Probably like a dime. Every day, like even joints, like it's like real tiny, your cherries. Now, when you're smoking like a three ounce blunt and it's like a beaker, so what you're lighting is the base. And that base is probably like. Big, the cherry is going to be bigger than your face. Yes. It's like hot. And then when you inhale, remember, you're not inhaling a little inch. You're inhaling fucking 12 inches of cherry. So that smoke intake with the tobacco and the weed and all the hash you put in there, it does some shit to you. And I felt a little woozy after that hit. (laughs) I did too. I had to go sit down for a few minutes. Yeah, but we, and then we realized... I was like, this is what we need to do all the fucking time. Yeah. Get these fucking big blunts and start going shit. And we were going viral before like viral was a thing. They kept getting bigger and bigger. They started taking our videos and pictures and and, and watermarking them for themselves and reposting them like it was that. Oh, that is true. I forgot about that. What? That, they were we, doing I that. did a show about this shit already. <laughs> I, was, I forgot about that. the credit, that. man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I even remember even side shows. Like, you remember the, the five bazooka. pound bazooka? That was one of my favorites. Cherry. That was a big chair. That yeah. was that lasted for six hours, and we still didn't finish it. Someone yeah. went home with it. Yeah, it was over a pound roach still. That, that was uh, that. A, a big blunt. What is one of the, your most favorite blunts that you've rolled? Or, and, or who is, like, the craziest person you've seen smoke one of your blunts? Like, you're like, damn, I can't believe this person is requesting a blunt. Wow, there's, that list is pretty long. <laughs> I know, bro, I'm telling you, there's so many people I've seen. With I was blunts. happy. Uh, I'd say the first picture I ever saw was when I made a little double barrel shotgun when I was making smaller guns. Um, I saw Snoop smoking it on stage. What? That actually was pretty. made me feel pretty good. Oh, yeah. I remember one of the, I did one of those double, uh, so I did a sawed off shotgun with Be Real. Yes. At, uh, at uh, what's that, reggae? Festival of Monterey. Uh, uh, shout out. Uh, uh, I was up I there. I can't remember. But we did it on stage in front of thousands of people. That was good. That and was then great. the big at, at Blazers Cup. Blazers I had a Cup. Big old blood. And then you gave me the hand where I broke off the fingers and each. Fi- and then I threw them to the crowd as individual Skeleton bloods. Hand. Bro, you've done Halloween. Th- you've done holiday things. Oh, I love holiday themes. And, and the biggest one I think I've seen you do. Vader. Vader, ten pounds. The Damn, Vader was 10 pounds. 10, 10 pounds. Pound blood. It was actually 10 pounds, 100 grams, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck. So it's like 10 pounds, 10 point, 10 point 10.1. Yeah. Uh, that was, was uh, the one you debuted uh, for your gallery, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. I, I think you are the first person that I've seen have an actual art show about blunts and rolling blunts. I think I have. I am you the have. first person. I actually really enjoyed doing that. Yeah. It was great. I got to actually make really big blunts. 
I actually made a fish that was five pounds. I don't know if you remember what? that. I do remember the fish. It was yeah. sitting in a case. It you was had the big, big heart. Fish. It was interactive. You interactive. had a duck that was on it that was flying. Birds flying. Yeah, eagles. That was eagles, my favorite. A dove. Yeah. You had a whole a bunch bit of, of books. everything. Yeah, and then you you roll so many crazy. You've, you've uh, you know every season is different. You always have like a different thing. You, you've done like different weapons. You've done different vegetables. You've done different glass you know, items. One of the funnest things I ever had making was the Diaz brothers making uh, the uh, UFC, the gloves? UFC gloves. Oh, those are sick. Oh, so, just because I made that last minute. You know. You know what? One of my favorite things you made is what? Call me bias. Your face. When I smoke my face, the big one at the CHRU. Because you made me a mini one, too, yes. but the big one, you like the detail you do in it is crazy. I also made you a microphone with your face on it. What? Yeah. You did? Yeah. There was a lot a lot of cannabis cups, a lot of secret sessions that you have uh, got me high. And I brought you to here today. Uh, I, first, I wanted to welcome you to the podcast audience. I know people probably know who you are. Hello. Not. We made a little uh, introduction real quick. Because uh, a lot of people always ask how to roll. A lot of yeah. people have a lot of questions. You two are like the best uh, uh, rollers, I think, in the world around here. There's, you know, a couple of people out there, like we said, shout out to uh, uh, Tony Greenhand. Yes. Shout out to uh, uh, Iron Chef. He's done a lot. He's done that selfie and he's yeah, done the yeah. lampshade. He's done, he's done a whole bunch of things. Hand. Now there's like rolling <laughs> leagues about, uh, uh, with oh, these. there's a lot of rolling leagues. There's a lot of like leagues. groups that are calling themselves like rollers. So it's like started a whole new wave and it's fucking awesome to see. It's definitely that nice we're to see. Here. But I just want to say like, uh, uh, like what's like a basic tip that people should know about rolling? Like, cause I see people always stressing out or they get frustrated if it's a paper, if it's a, a swisher or a backwood or Optimo or if a palm or a hamper, whatever the fuck. I, I but, just want to say first, there's no rules or limits to how you roll a blunt. Okay. Like so many people are quick to say, oh, you, if it's. Two, two grams or less is not a backwood. Four or more. Four or more. You know, it's like whatever you want to put in your blunt ah, ah, is a blunt. Ah. Yeah. That's what you want. Like, so I, I always say be. extra saliva because it's a personal and I like human terps. And if it smokes, it's it's good enough for yeah, me. Yeah. So other people's opinions about what a blunt should be shouldn't affect how you roll. However you want to roll, you should roll. Just be comfortable. It'd be comfortable. Okay. But what if, like, uh, uh, they have, uh, like, they're having trouble. Like, they just... Don't know how to like seal it or like a basic rule because I always just tell them, you know, just fucking use more saliva, dog. Fuck it, more saliva. Yeah, I like human turps. I like, tell people first, uh, <laughs> y'all are like, shut the yeah. fuck up, Adam. <laughs> Script being stupid. Get uh, a fucking machine. Patience mm -hmm. is key. Oh, definitely patience. Because, uh, for me, when I first started to roll a blunt or even a, a joint, you know, uh, the weed falling out of it would always kind of stress me out and, you know, for whatever reason, try to make me roll it faster. But, you know, just you take your time. If weed falls out, you can always put it back in. And then from there, it's just, for me, it's, I would say it's making sure you break down the weed good enough. And before you start rolling, spread it out evenly. So, so I know there's like different consistencies when rolling. Like, uh, I know... I don't really like grinding up my weed in a grinder for my backwoods, but for a joint, I would have it grinded up because you can't leave it chunky in a joint. Yeah. So uh, uh, do you grind up your weed in the backwoods or do you use like the hand tech? Uh, it depends. If I'm on the go, uh, I'll use hand tech. You know, Burt tech, shout out Burt. Uh, uh, just like you crush that, <laughs> Yeah, just crush, crush it. it. Um, but if I have time to sit down and take my time, um, yeah. I'll use a grinder. But if I use a grinder, it's... Two twists, one, two. Keep it chunky. Um, yeah, and then anything else after that, I can do with my hand. <laughs> if you need to break it down more, how about you? How about you, weavers? So, and your blush, are you just grinding it to dust, or are you no, keeping it I'm chunky? Not grind Depends on the weed. Depends you on know, the weed. If the weed's a little too moist, I actually use my hands and just break it all down with my hands. Because I, I like using a grinder, but <coughs> I don't want anything that's so, like dust and dry weed doesn't really help me. It needs to have some love in it. Still. Yes, dry weed doesn't help. So like if like this, can I can we light this? Yeah, light it up. Oh shit, I'm about to light up this little fucking revolver right here. Pew 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 pew. We about to take it. I'm about <laughs> we about to uh, get lit up right now. Uh, so I've lit I've lit um, hundreds, I think, of these blunts now, yeah. and um, I, I'm very thankful. That I had the opportunity to do this. I, it's, you know, one of the stoner boner moments in my life. You know, I've been smoking weed a lot, a, a very long time. And, you know, growing up, I was always thinking about shit I want to do. You know, having weed with your name, your face on it or your own award-winning weed is something I always talked about. Bam, LOG with LA Kush made it happen. Being in magazines, smoking with celebrities, 
But smoking like artistic blunts has been on there, like smoking crazy yeah. shit. And it's great to have it. I'm gonna light the shit up. About to get lit. Uh, but what about you with the artistic ways, Jaime? What would you give someone that's trying um, to do? Because I would never have the patience to, you have to, have to patience. work on one of these. You have to. Like the patience is key. You gotta be patient. Yeah, I mean, you just can't expect to roll it in five minutes, unfortunately. But I'm trying to. I'm trying to get high right now. No, you can't. Then uh, smoke. So I say you roll one. Joint. Yeah, you roll one now. <laughs> Get high and then work on the And then project. work on the project, yeah. And, I mean, if you have an idea, just try it. I mean, you're not going to improve it unless you try. But look at all the detail agree. in your gun. Like, you got the, the bullet you section, to, uh, you got the trigger. So, and also, don't use a you lot of paper. A lot of people think I use a lot of paper, but I actually follow a little ratio of blunt wraps, you know? What's, what's that ratio? I'd say once I get to about uh, anything that's up to... A pound of weed. I have two layers of blunt wraps. Pound of weed. Plus, um, a pa- who rolls a pound of weed? <laughs> you say it so notch plus. Oh, when I roll a pound of weed, it's just like a <laughs> plus <laughs> like the gold paper. You know, plus shine paper. Trying to hit this. Trying to hit but, this, man. Yes, please. But as you get closer to the handle or the roach, it actually has more paper, just basically, so it's sturdy and it'll hold the you whole structure. You don't want structure. them flats. Yeah, because it gets hot. The paper gets hot and it'll bend. And anyways, it's the roach, so it doesn't make a difference. But the part you're smoking usually has just basically two layers of blunt wraps and uh, whatever I use to decorate. What? Anything more than that's a little crazy. When I rolled the bazooka, I'm not going to lie, that probably had about five layers. But, but that's it was fucking five, five pounds. pounds. And, it's, and I had to put five layers to make sure it was straight. Because you guys saw the pictures yeah. I was holding it nice and straight. Bro, I, so. I, I, was, I was holding that blunt for a little while. And let me tell you something. It's like, you know, when you hold weights in your hand and after a while they become so heavy. <laughs> so like holding this five pound blunt and then like leaning down and trying to smoke people out with it. Started getting really heavy. Didn't it have a smokable RPG? Also, yeah, yes. it had the, yes, yes, it yes. Did. And the same night you had a, a gold AK with a detachable smokable clip. Yes. Look, Dan all remembers right. all the details. You try to hit That's, this, Adrian? That was one of my first uh, party <laughs> events. Uh, actually, that was when you called me Chad. I, Chad? I think, yeah. <laughs> fun oh, fact. Really? <laughs> I, I like to give people nicknames when I meet them. I just call them whatever. It was Chad, loud. Chad from Chicago. Yep. Chad from Chicago out here. So now, but uh, roll and BMC. I always like to use a glass tip also. It always. Makes a difference. Because that way I could wrap the tobacco on there and it's a good thing to actually... It will hold the structure you're building, you know, with the tobacco. It yeah. reinforces the bottom. And it's it makes a lot it a lot easier to smoke. It's a lot and if you're passing it around. I always rolled something big. So, I mean, I try to picture hundreds of people putting their mouth on a big tobacco. See, that's why I'm always glad that I smoke it sound really yeah. good. I'm a fan of uh, putting filters in too, whether it's yeah. the, the rock crutch or glass filter. Just because in, the, in, the, in, these, in this industry, you're smoking in social settings like 80% of the time. And a lot of people just smoke. And don't really take no. into account or consideration, like, not manhandling the, the blunt or joint or whatever. Um, and a lot of times it gets all wet and pinched and, you know, makes the smoking experience pretty shitty. Do you guys have a favorite consistency of weed to roll your blunts? Like, do you like it to be a little bit more sticky? Do you find out because it takes shape better? Or do you like it more dry so it breaks down easier? Do you like more, better airflow? Because I know I've seen some... T- tricks that you guys I've, I've taken notes and seen how you guys roll it both of you guys have like a little secret airflow in your blunts <laughs> that you guys put in there that i don't think people really recognize like i've gotten some blunts from weavers where he had a couple little wooden sticks in there to, it was holding shape but it was also creating airflow. airflow so when i lit it it wasn't like just stuck i would yeah. always i would always inhale first and get all that loose weed out because I know how it is rolling. Uh, and then, because I know you made the air holes, but is that something that you think people, if they're rolling big things, should consider? Oh, they definitely should. Yeah. Because when you're pa- when you're packing it in there, that's what actually helps it smoke evenly. At that, least for me, you know, when I'm putting a big amount, if I put an ounce, half a pound, you know, it depends how I pack it in yeah. there. And the airflow actually controls how even it's Yeah, and burn. I learned that from you. Big tip. So, that, so you would yeah. say, like, really consider... You, Think about airflow when rolling it. If you roll something big and there's no airflow, you're going to get a headache trying to suck the smoke through. Right. It's going to be all... Yeah, here, I'll take that. Thank you, Andrew. Look at that. I think it went around the whole studio. Everyone hit it, and we still are at the fucking butt of the handle. 
That Done. is how crazy these bunts are and how long they last. And it's great to have these at events. And it's awesome to have you two in the industry and just, uh, you know, being innovative and letting people know that, you know, if you find your passion, you can make something happen. That's, that's all you got to do. I was talking to some kid today at the sesh and like, you know, he's has this like regular job and he's been coming all the time. And I asked him what he really wanted to do with his life. Like, what's your like? Yeah, you're out here, whatever, stocking shells. But what is it that you want to do? And then he told me a couple of his hobbies. I'm like, yo, just, you know, fucking start do start doing this. Let's see what fucking happens. It doesn't hurt. Yeah. Like make money yeah. doing what you love. And here's a Definitely. little here's a little fucking idea. And fucking start doing it. And I saw a light bulb go off in his head. And hopefully by summer this fool's gonna be killing it. Yep. I've had I've had good jobs, you know. I've made good money, but I haven't been as happy as I am doing this. Oh uh, yeah. I, I mean I can't compare. I'm doing two things I love. I'm in the marijuana industry and I'm making art. What so you know? before I got into even thought this was a possibility, I, uh, you know, I, I went to, I finished my uh, undergrad, then I went to grad school. So I got my MBA. What? And we got brains. And uh, for a little while, I was look, trying to find a job in the corporate environment, you know, like just doing whatever entry level, like marketing and whatever. Uh, and I quickly realized that having the MBA only gave me an upper hand on other entry level people. And not, it just looks better on the resume. Yeah, yeah you I know. Agree. So like, I even applied to like Weed Maps, Dope Magazine. Okay. You know, like whatever I could find that was like kind of corporate, I could use this degree for. And I, I realized that like, man, I don't want to fucking wake up and work a like a regular nine to five for like someone else. So I just uh, I worked for my family restaurant and all while uh, just continuing to build social media, doing what I did as a hobby, and uh, started going on to the events. Like my first one was a. Uh, uh, in Denver, 420. Ooh, which one? Uh, I think it high was times? High Times, yeah. And uh, I think was that, I didn't know you guys at the time, but I knew you guys through social media, and you guys had the the Vader Vader booth. Village was that when Ray Schremer came out? Yeah, that and, was a uh, big ass cup. That was oh, a good one. That. that was a good yeah. one. And I just remember I could hear your voice throughout the the, the, the event. What? Yeah. Wah. Wah. <laughs> You're like, who the fuck is this annoying ass kid? And then it's just like networking from Why there. Why the fuck is he throwing out 10 pounds to the people? <laughs> <laughs> that, shout out to Vader Village and that whole fucking uh, oh, yeah. row we did at High Times. That was a good little tour. We had a lot of fun. I met a lot of amazing people. Got to smoke a lot of your blunts on those stages. It's been, I, I remember DJ Quick was oh. smoking one of your blunts at one of the cups. I, uh, uh, I've passed your blunts. I've passed your short. blunts. Two, I had, yeah, too short, bro. So many fucking people have smoked your blunts. It's just crazy. I mean, I, I, you've seen I've, lately. I make uh, logo blunts. Yes, for that, brands. I actually tried to push that a long time ago, and everybody just laughed at me. And one day, uh, L.A. Kush asked me to make a, a d exhibit blunt, and I wrote <laughs> out his name. Yeah. Ever since then, everybody just keep constantly asking me, asking me to make logos. Logos. I've logos. Logos. I've preferred people <laughs> to you because they'll hit me up. They go to the slide in DMs. Oh, can you do, like, not maybe not so much now, yeah. but, like, in the beginning, you know? Yeah. They're like, oh, do, can you do, like, a, a logo or, like, any shapes? And I'm like, no, nah, honestly, I can't. But, like, you know, I know this guy named Weavers who can do, like, anything. What you want? So I don't like, know if those people ever hit you up, but, like... I've challenged. Probably, I love a challenge. I've challenged you to a couple things. I'm like, I love ah, a you challenge. probably can't make it, but I had this idea, and he's like, "What you mean, dog?" <laughs> like, I see it. You're like, "Bet." And you know, everybody's been happy so far. I've had it. I haven't had any complaints. No, oh, they're all pretty so. smokable. I uh, <laughs> want to do this collab with you. You know how they have those shot, those uh, whiskey glasses with yeah. you can put the cigar in. Yeah. You make that. I'll make the cigar to match it. Oh, and, definitely. You know, we could like auction it or something. Oh, make I'm the cup, the smokable cup with the smoke. Damn, with the blood, yeah, with the blood. With that, yeah. that would be great. With the high end, damn, again. You know, nice and nice, something easy that you know we could whip, the, whip that up, no problem. Oh, definitely. Like, it look really dope. Really Down functional. To do that. What? That's a great idea. You heard it here, exclusives. <laughs> we making it could, happen. Like, line it in like that cellulose clear wrap, so we could actually take like one shot out of it. Ooh. Is that possible? Yeah. Make it's it possible. real official. Make it real official. That's a good challenge. I like that. Hey. Let's take one, one shot. shot. Just for one shot. Yeah, I was going to say just one shot. Or it's got to be quick. Yeah, quick. Mark, <laughs> mark this moment so when it happens, we know. Mark this moment so when it happens, we know the date. And then when the execution happens, we'll be like, look, this is where they conceptualized it. This is where they executed it. 
we probably are gonna have to pour them at the same time. Yeah. yeah. And not even like, you know? Yep. <laughs> just get a super bartender to just fucking yep. do all that, like bottle flipping. What is that called? Where they do all the bottle oh, the, do their little tricks. Oh, it's like flares. Flare. Shit. It's flare. Whatever the fuck. Yeah. Whatever the fuck it is. I worked in a restaurant, they tried to make me learn that shit. Nah. You're like, yeah. I got an MBA it's hard, dog. Man. Relax. Which but you worked at your what kind of restaurant does your family have? Uh Thai food. Thai food? Yeah. What? My brother, my sister in law is Thai. So, yeah, they had some pretty bomb-ass food. And you're like, I'll work here. Yeah, I worked there. I made, like, deliveries. Did you get high in the parking lot in the back? I got, you know, when I was doing deliveries, I was getting high for sure. Definitely got high with some of the customers. <laughs> saw what? some weird shit. Yeah. Being, man. What do you mean you saw some weird shit? Like, you'd go into people's houses when you deliver the food? Yeah, like, so one time I made a delivery to, like, this dude's condo. And uh, I knock on the door. He opens the door and, like... In the back, I see like he's doing some sort of like dominatrix, like photo shoot or something. There was like chicks like tied to like wheels oh, in, man. In, in like the black straps and leather. And you know, he was in plain clothes, like ain't nothing was going on back there. It's, like it's regular, yeah, super regular. And I just gave him his food. He was super pumped about the food. He's like, know? hell yeah, bro, we're starving. And I was just like, kind of like, what? And then, you know, he shut the door. What is like, she? Is she just in the background, like, hi? Yeah, she was chill, like, you know, like, just tied up. She just looked just- like she was having fun. Oh, and then, uh, they didn't invite you in. He's like, "Hey, you wanna?" <laughs> nah, <laughs> I had other all the deliveries in the car, and then, uh, other times, you know, like I've delivered to a bunch of younger dudes with a big tank of nitrous, and they're all hitting those fucking uh, okay. balloons, like not like the regular balloons, but like the ones you like the punch oh, the bag punch. ones. Oh, the yeah, huge, like, ones. huge ones. Yeah, they're like, "You want one?" I was like, "No." No, I can't do it was that. Like, you want one? <laughs> <laughs> you want one, bro? <laughs> it was pretty fun. Just to cruise around, listen to music, get high, meet yeah. a bunch of different people. That's crazy. It's kind of like, I guess delivering food is kind of like uh, uh, butt tending because like, it's all demographics. Everyone comes in. When I was butt tending, like, it would be 18-year-olds yeah. to 88-year-olds in exactly. every occupation in between. And you're like, yo, like, I know we all suffer from ailments. But some of y'all just, <laughs> it's great though. I love it. It's great to meet all these people. And it's great that cannabis brings so many different people together uh, from all sorts of communities. And there's a lot of friendships that are built on cannabis because a good friend begins with someone that smokes weed. You know that person is going to be cool if he gets high. And uh, it's great to see it. And we all met because of cannabis from this, uh, this plant. So it's awesome. I've made some good friends because of cannabis. What? Likewise. Uh, yeah. These two guys, stand-up guys over here. What? No, it's uh, awesome. And just seeing you guys uh, go on the journey with me. We've been down many roads and uh, adjusted to uh, all the obstacles that we get in this industry. I know there's, especially with the uh, tobacco law. Yeah, I know you're still out me. here rolling these artistic blunts. Uh, uh, I know we're not, you're not selling them. They're more for, you know, events and people uh, just ask you for them. And some of them go to charity. I remember one of them was on a charity. Well, it was what, like an elephant tusk? What was that one? It was an elephant tusk for um, Stone Road. Yeah. They auctioned it off and the proceeds went to help the elephants in Africa that were getting their tusks. Tusks? How much did it auction for? Tell them. It auctioned for um, uh, 5,000. What? 5K blunts. Yep. Vor- uh, you could see the article on Forbes. They My va- boy's in Forbes. They valued it at $25,000. I mean, yeah. I feel like it's definitely worth more than it got auctioned for. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. I feel like. Uh, How much weed was in it? Um, oh, let me think. It was about. I know you've rolled hundreds of blunts. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it was over two pounds. How many like, blunts do you think you've rolled in your life? I was trying to think about that today, actually. Dan. Man. I don't know. I he, say, he, we were uh, talking about it before the yeah. before the show right same now. Same question to you too. I didn't even hear you guys, but well, uh, I could say I've rolled over two hundred <laughs> microphones. Over two hundred microphones. Yes. Those are my favorites too. Yes, most of them went to you. What? Damn, <laughs> no <laughs> way. I can't no, no, not most of them, but I've definitely all of them. I've but had I people. I was, I've I had like, orders of twenty microphones at a time. Yeah, just, just for promotion. You know. I remember I gave a microphone of two chains, and yeah. I gave him a. a, a Shotgun that cocks. Nice little tiny shotgun. Little pump. Papa, that said his name on it. <laughs> what? That was crazy. Yeah. That's probably one of the craziest people I've seen smoke your blunt and really enjoy it. Two chains. Oh, it's, that was great. That yeah. was cool. Actually enjoyed that too. Yeah. It's, it's been, so uh, uh, let me ask you though, what has been your all time favorite artistic blunt that you rolled that you like 
My was like, this is a good favorite. challenge. Like, it came out great. It smoked well. Everything about it was awesome. Because I know as an artist, there's a lot of fucking I mean, things you, you critique on yourself. And no say, one else sees it, but you're like, oh, I know it's fucking. I, I'd have to say the five pound rocket launcher no. because that's the first time. Because my problem was that anytime somebody rolls something that's over a few pounds, it's so hot and it's so hard to smoke, you know? It's pretty, it gets pretty intense. So that's the first time I thought about actually put a one, a one inch dowel rod down the middle. So you're fo forced to suck the cool air and that way it's cooling down the hit. And everybody smoked over, over three pounds of the blunt without complaining that it was too hot. So that actually made me feel really good. That's crazy. And look, I had this blunt out chilling in the ashtray for a couple of minutes because I we all like took a little break and I just picked it up. But it's still smoking. That's how great your rolls are. You still trying to hit that, Andrew? Do you have any questions, Andrew? Do you? Because I've seen you sitting here like this is the most you've sat in the studio at once during one of my shows. I've done a couple here so far, and and you're always like back and forth, and uh, you come I'm in. I'm always and, in the background, but yeah. But I like now so you're fun. like, and I've had like nice. awesome growers on here. I had crazy celebrities in they, here. I've had yeah. Grammy Award winners <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. and cannabis winners, and you're just in here like, famous, damn, these fools are famous actor. And I I went up to him when he came in, honestly, and I said, dude, you're probably one of the most like. I've seen his pieces on Instagram and I told him as a fellow man of the tribe with you, uh, when I saw the dreidel, it was the fucking coolest oh, thing ever. And honestly, thank you. honestly, it was like, I was like, I, w I felt very fucking honored to hear and like, listen how you do it and all that stuff. So Adam like was uh, surprised that I, 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 you know, I decided to come in. Yeah, you, jump I mean, on. you I never know, jump on. Usually oh, you're yeah, in here I like, appreciate that. usually you're in here like maybe 25% of the show, but I say you've been <laughs> here like good 70, chilling out, pay attention. I know you're going out and snacking. I got the munch pack out there, some pizzas and shit, but you're like, damn, these fools out here. And, and that's one of the things I know we said you know, seasonal things. I'm actually pretty proud of this Puffco peak attachment. It's fucking I'll awesome. Tell you the truth. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> we're, we're not even finishing the gun, so I'm not trying to light that, but I would oh, like no. to enjoy it with you whenever you do decide to light it. It's going to burn for an over an hour. Speaking of the seasonal things, though, I know you spoke about that. Um, the dreidels were cool. We had a menorah. Menorah. With the each each oh, candle yeah, was a joint. Was awesome and the menorah itself was a, a blunt. And, and a blunt, yeah. I even asked him. During the holidays about it. Because didn't I see you on Hanukkah or around Hanukkah time? And I was asking about it. Because I think you were going to maybe have him come in. Yeah, we were, we were going to okay. do something like that. Yeah. but And you saw that the dreidels would spin. They spin. They were actual functional yes. dreidels. And I actually played before I smoked it. I lost some shekels, but it's all good. But uh, uh, what I really enjoyed, too, that wasn't really smokable was like the uh, winter wonderland scene. <laughs> oh, where you created yes. a whole a whole scene with like... A, a log cabin house of mini weaved blunts with a chimney, and then you had like a shattered walkway a and shattered a whole bunch door. of like THCA snow on nugs that were covered yeah. in the snow, and there was wax all over the place. And you had like little fence, like every detail was smokable. I actually loved making that because I actually got the idea from basically food. You know, when they ha when they make cakes, they actually I've actually been to a party where they made a casino and every, the whole casino was a cake. You know, you could walk up to the table, <laughs> right. cut off a piece of the chair <laughs> and eat it. Yeah, so I was thinking the same thing. Why can't you do that with marijuana? So that was my idea with that. I wish I could do something on a bigger scale, but Let's that would be kind of hard now. Why why? That's a lot of products. Come on, man. We can make <laughs> it happen. We out here. Shout I mean, out to my was, boy that makes it. We got that traditional market still out there. I love doing that. That's actually one of my favorite things. Yeah, so we, we could we could probably make it happen. What do you need? Just like a bunch of like shatter making, and distillate you know? and cannabis? I mean, that's all personal stuff we could get. It's like four nugs. It's like less than an ounce for the joint. The bigger it is, the more te detail. The more details. You know? So you would like to do, another, we'll do like a 2019 version. We got a couple months till we could get there. Oh, I would love to do well, that. Well, I can start collecting now. Definitely. What? I mean, if it's something that involves water we or ice. We collab. You know? What? Shatter would be good for ice or water. Oh, you know? like a little ice skating rink. You know? So we should get some uh, get water some clearing just sand. For, make a pond. Pond, yeah, exactly. Ooh. Ooh it see? Actually, like, you can make I some yellow snow. Could incorporate the loaded blunts. They're yeah, perfectly. Cabins. Right there, perfect. Big logs. cabins. I've been thinking about it. I, I got boxes. I'm just oh. playing. But yeah, we can make it happen. Make like three cabins. We out here. <laughs> Weavers, Roll BMC. They got the social medias, right? Weavers underscore at Roll underscore, underscore BMC. BMC. 
What's like something you like to uh, let the people know out there about rolling? I know we touched a little base on it, but I know we're high. People might have forgot what you said earlier. Just like, I know people out here trying to roll. People out here. Give it your best effort. Don't give up. Yeah. But anything you think of, any idea, don't be discouraged to try it. Just do it. Yeah. Yeah. Do like, it. Like Mikey, just do it. It's the only way you can learn. Yeah. Trial and error is your best friend. Yeah. Hands on. Are you almost here? You need another joint? Here's a Supreme Green joint. Light it. Yeah, hi. You need another joint? We're all at the roaches right now. We got to smoke more. But it's about that time. So shout out to Roll BMC Weavers for coming through Purple Haze Dash Radio out here. Shout out to Adrian, my boy, for making this happen so you can watch it all on the YouTubes. Make sure you follow him, too. Just go to my IG. It's, it's hard. It's Adrian Skeete, IZQ. You won't remember because it's probably be written right here if you really want to make it happen. Uh, uh, shout out to everyone in the studio. Appreciate all y'all for tuning in. And I want to give a special shout out. Turn the music down real quick, Adrian. We'll give a special shout out to all the growers out there. Everyone who grows weed, if it's one plant or a thousand plants or a thousand acres or a hundred thousand lights or whatever the fuck you got going on because without you guys none of us would be able to get high none of us would be enjoying this we wouldn't be able to get any of the products we got they wouldn't be able to roll their blunts i wouldn't be yeah. able to smoke no their weed, blunts. No blunts yep i wouldn't be- <laughs> <laughs> so uh shout out to all the growers out there and if you are just starting just keep it up there's gonna be a lot of opportunity to all right andrew you can turn it back up uh adam Hill, the highest host follow me you already know get high everywhere on the social media getting high with right here on youtube uh catch me in real life i got a couple events coming up uh you go on the website if you want how updated it is but check out the ig appreciate you two coming through again thank you, thank you for having i know us. i'll probably Definitely. have you guys on real soon again i'll probably see you guys in a little bit we're gonna go party tonight <laughs> and get higher thank you guys yeah bye